opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick buzz's youtube channel and press that bell icon now this ICC Women's World Cup has been the closest tournament that I have ever witnessed. The amount of last ball finishes, the fact that the reigning champs lost their first three games, have now fought their way into the final to come up against a side who is still unbeaten in this tournament. Time to preview the final, the big one, here on Crick Buzz. Australia take on England and Australia have had to move to Christchurch Hagley Oval, a ground that they haven't played at, whereas England have already played it at this facility. So Australia will need to adapt quickly. The good thing for England is they've got momentum on their side. The fact that they lost early matches, they had to pretty much assume it was a do or die game every time they went out there and they've been able to get across the line and they're starting to play their best cricket. As for Australia, well, you look at their last game against the West Indies and it was a solid performance. They're searching for the perfect game and it was pretty close to being perfect. The thing is they have only been really challenged by one side this tournament and that was England. And we have to go back right to the start of the tournament where Australia at Hamilton were able to score over 300 runs and England were oh so close to chasing that down thanks to Nat Sivers' 100. When you look at the two sides and you look at their aces, for England, it's Sophie Eccleston and Charlie Dean, the spinners. They've found someone to go with Sophie Eccleston. Charlie Dean has bowled really well. The fact that she's only, I think, had played five games out of the seven and they picked up 11 wickets just shows you how successful she's been. But they really control that middle period. 11 overs to 40 overs. They pick up a lot of wickets and it's really hard to score runs. On the flip side, Australia actually plays spin really well, so I can't wait to see that matchup. But then when you look at Australia's ace, well, it's their top order, isn't it? They've, they've scored 76% of Australians' runs. That's Healy, Haynes, Lanning and Mooney. The big question is, will Perry play? I don't think she will play given the fact that she hasn't been able to train in a cricket-specific role for probably over a week. And they probably feel, and she will probably feel, that she is just not ready to give her best. If she does come in, it will strengthen the side. But Australia have adapted before. They've won titles without Elise Perry. In terms of the playing 11, I don't think they'll make a change. Unless Perry comes in, then Sutherland goes out. But for the Australian team, they'll stick with their trusted uh, 11. Darcy Brown obviously coming in, bowling her quick outswingers. Megan Shoot, can she produce some important wickets at the top? Alana King, how effective will she be in the middle period? Uh, and then obviously the Australian top order, which has been really good. As for England, well, they would be very happy that they finally, halfway through the tournament, elevated Danny Wyatt. She was able to thank them with 129 against South Africa in the semi-final. Tammy Beaumont still hasn't gone big yet. Heather Knight looks a little bit tired. Nat Sivers looking good. Maybe she can produce her best against the Australian side. And from a bowling department, Brunt has found her form, which is great to see. So England won't change their side unless there's an injury. And fingers crossed that's not the case. Well, I'm gonna go with Anya Shrubsol. I mean, you look at what she's been able to do in finals, in clutch situations, in ICC tournaments. Even this one, when New Zealand were playing against England and they nearly got England out of the competition, it was Anya Shrubsol with the bat that secured the victory. Then you look in the semi-final and the fact that within the first over of Shrubsol, she picks up Wolver the leading run scorer of the tournament. And then you have to rewind back five years ago when she was able to produce that six for against India to win the title in front of a packed Lords crowd. Can she do it again? As for the Australians, I'm gonna go with Meg Lanning, simply because she is the one player that really hurt when Australia lost that T20 World Cup final in Eden Gardens 2016 and then 12 months later lost the semi-finals against India in the, the 50 over World Cup. And it's been her and Matthew Mott and obviously the senior players that have really tried to change the style, the brand, how they want to go about it. 
and she's been the leading force. So I don't think she's gonna miss an opportunity to make her mark on this final. She will fight tooth and nail to stay out there and ensure that she's able to contribute with the bat. If it doesn't work, watch her in the field. She will try and be the marshal and be the calm one. But Meg Lanning, I get a sense, really wants to stand up in this, this final. Tip of the day to both sides, try and enjoy it. It's, it's really nervous. I've been there before. Um, butterflies, obviously a day night clash means you wake up and you just wanna to get to the ground and start your routine so you forget that it's a final. Um, enjoy the moment because when you look back on your career, this, this final will be extremely special. For the Australians, they need to adapt quickly. They really need to be able to assess the conditions, especially at Hagley Oval. Will they be different to Wellington, which they're used to? And make sure that they've got plan A, B and C and understand that England will challenge them, absolutely challenge them, and they've just got to stay calm and collected. For England, it's not a tip necessarily, but it's one last chance for them to dig into the reserves of all of their energy, all of their fight, all of their willpower to get them across the line. I wonder how much energy they've expended to get to the finals. Can they go for one last push? As the defending champions, the adrenaline will kick in. Will it be enough to overcome this mighty Australian side? Who has the edge? Well, I know that I'm Australian and people may think that sometimes I'm a little bit biased, but I do feel based on what we've seen in this tournament, Australia have depth. They have depth in the batting department, they have depth in the bowling department. But one thing this Australian team knows is that England understand what is required to win games when needed. And this is the game that everyone worked so hard for years and years and years to get to this moment. Who can keep their nerve? Who's got a chance to raise a trophy? Both teams do, but Australia have the slightest of edges.